Hi, I just wanted to give you an update again about the um, oil spill situation. Hi. <laughs> Got my family pet here. Gulf of Mexico oil leak could increase by a fifth. New strategy called a containment cap could increase the flow of oil because a pipe that's called a riser needed to be cut in order for the cap to have a spot to fit over clearly. This is Carol Browner, President Obama's advisor for environment and energy. She said, what our experts are saying is that when you cut the riser, the kink may be holding some of the oil in, and so we could see an increase. So what they're telling you is that the oil flow may increase by a fifth. You notice at the beginning it was like 5,000 barrels a day, then it was 40 to 70. Then Matt Simmons, who we may or may not be able to trust, said 100,000 barrels a day. And, and now it might go up by a fifth. The picture that they show you here is again uh, that, that little leak that we got the live footage of that may or may not be the actual leak according to Matt Simmons and this is the, Nicholas Pozzi. The whole fixture was only a mile long, right? From the platform to the bottom of the sea. So how did it, how does the other gusher get six, seven miles away from it? It was supposed to be an oil rig that had a blowout and sunk. So don't they know where that oil rig was in the first place? So I'm sure they know more than they're telling us. Yeah, it's hard to say how bad is the spill really. Um, Aaron here, my husband, says that, well, on the show that we listened to, Eric Lovely's show, he had on uh, the, the wife of an oil rig worker who was giving her husband's testimony, which was that BP is actually doing a lot to stop the, the oil leak, that the media is lying about them doing nothing. That they're actually doing a lot, and that the leak is not uh, as uh, big as they are making it out to be. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. It's not even as big as the Ixtoc, the Mexican rig that blew in 1979. Yeah, when Ixtoc blew, you could see thick black oil all over the shores. I mean, it's been, you know, over a month since this happened, and and there is some oil washing up, but it's not what you would think if this was really an underground oil volcano. I mean, an underwater oil volcano. And they keep making this hay about, like, tar balls washing up on the beach. And uh, I, I read a story from this guy that's been living down there all his life, and that's a common, that's a common thing on the Gulf. There's 4,000 uh, 4, platforms in the Gulf, there's always like streaks all over the water there and, and a lot of them leak. So there's al always like uh, oil blobs on the beach here and there. It's a common sight. But Obama, you know, went down to the beach in Louisiana to show his support, lend a helping hand, and pick, a, pick up a couple of these little tar balls himself. And here you can see him crouching down. I mean, this is a president of the people. This is a man who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. This is a guy who squats on the beach like a commoner and picks up tar balls with his hand. If you go to the YouTube channel uh, Dirty Cajuns, you'll see wildlife biologist Mark Gauthier um, showing you the coast. It looks like this and like this. There is oil there, but what he'll also tell you is that it's the dispersant that's making people sick. It made him sick, in fact, when he went out with a uh, sea kayak, and that when you try to get into the areas that have oil, you can't go anywhere near it, so you can't actually see the extent of the damage. So we, don't, we know there is damage, but we don't know how bad it is, and it may be exaggerated, but I don't think that the damage caused by the dispersants is exaggerated. That's what I have a feeling. This is like a uh, a mega disaster cloaked in a mega disaster like they're wrapping up the oil the oil spill but uh, it's not really as bad as they're saying it is but at the same time they're creating a huge disaster with this dispersant hey, Louisiana Weekly dispersants add to Gulf spills toxic threats within a month of the April 20th blowout BP had already applied about 800,000 gallons of Corexit dispersant to the waters of the Gulf. And uh, they refused uh, to follow the EPA's request that they find a less toxic dispersant. Finally, last week, the EPA and Coast Guard had to order them 
uh, to scale back their use of Corexit by 80 to 50 to 80 percent. Uh, Corexit, despite its name, doesn't correct anything. It should be called hides it because all it does is make the oil clump up and go to the bottom of the ocean. Here's a problem with the uh, dispersant from Press TV. Oil spill threatens total destruction. The, the problem here essentially is that Corexit is four times more toxic than oil. When mixed with warm waters of the Gulf, its molecules will be able to do something called phase transition. And what that means is it will change from a liquid into a gas, which can then be absorbed by clouds which can then be released as toxic rain, leading to what they call here unimaginable environmental catastrophe, destroying all life forms from the bottom of the evolutionary chart to the top. If you go to take part, you'll see uh, this company called Matter of Trust has been making these booms, but it's a hair boom bust. And I'll tell you why. These folks realize that hair not only floats, but absorbs oil, as does fleece and feathers. And if you put it in a nylon stocking and put it in the oily water, it absorbs the oil really well. So they collected a lot of hair and stuff and put it in these sock looking things and they want to donate it to help with the cleanup. But BP spokesman Matt Salt told Take Part that scientific testing has shown that too much water as a percentage of total liquid is collected in the volunteer hair booms and they sink within minutes. Just like my bathroom sponge sinks within minutes when I put it in the water and it gets full of water. Well, here's a picture of the hair boom sausage thing. Uh, here's the guy putting the oil into the tub of water. Here he is putting the hair boom into the tub of oily water. Here's the hair boom soaking up the oil and here's the hair boom floating, although it's full of oil and water. Surprise, surprise. Now, why won't BP use those hair booms? The people who make the dispersants? Yeah, Nalco. Nalco is the one who makes uh, corrects it. It turns out that in 2003, uh, Nalco was bought by the Blackstone Group, Apollo Management, LP, and Goldman Sachs Capital Partners. Somebody's making money off this. I wonder if that has anything to do with why they wouldn't switch to a less damaging dispersant. So who else is making money off this thing? Okay, this is from Daily Finance. Halliburton snaps up boots and coots from the uh, 12th of April, 2010. So it just happens to be that they're now in the oil well firefighting business as well. As of not even a couple of weeks before the well blew, which they cemented oversaw the cementing job and replaced the drilling mud with lighter seawater, if you remember. That's just a coincidence. But it works out pretty well for them. But wait, weren't Halliburton going to lose a bunch of money because maybe they're responsible in some way? And, and already their shares were going down. So they, they can't be profiting from this, can they? Well, I guess they can. Halliburton shares soar as company outlines obligations in BP oil spill. Yeah, turns out they're not going to be held liable for anything, says here, during a conference call with analysts Wednesday, Mark McCollum, Halliburton's chief financial officer, said, we believe we are fully indemnified for all potential claims and expenses as it relates to bodily injury, bodily injury claims or damage to the environment. Should be all right, then, for Halliburton. And the verdict is, we shall continue to use toxic dispersants, which are going to go up into the clouds and make toxic rain and kill everybody. Instead of using hair booms, we shall say, they sink. It's a lie, but nobody will know. I think it's a part of a much broader picture. Probably environmental warfare of some kind. Maybe it even it ties in with the chemtrails because this, this muck that they're putting in the ocean is going to evaporate into the clouds with the, which they have really saturated already. Who knows what kind of a combination that's going to cause.